On Britain's streets, a battle is raging. Over 11 million of us rent. Oh, God. But thousands fall victim to rogue landlords. There's just water cascading through here. Why should I live like this? Two million of us are private landlords. He's owed almost £10,000 in rent. But many face financial ruin at the hands of bad tenants. You're supposed to be out by yesterday. Well, we're still here. Get your hands out. Okay. Okay. Don't push. And that is what you're dealing with. In this series, we're on the front line with the enforcement officers who crack down on rogue landlords. There's a lot of scams going on. This is gross exploitation. It just can't continue. And the experts, whose job it is to evict bad tenants. This kind of stomped boils my blood. It can be a little bit scary at times. Hey! Oh, we're called a place! In this episode... You want to open a door for us, please? A High Court Sheriff helps an Essex grandmother evict her nightmare tenant. Hello. Good morning. <laughs> a London landlord's furious when he finds his flat on Airbnb. My blood pressure was at boiling point. And a raid in Harrow... Please. ..reveals more than poor living conditions. That's not for chopping vegetables, is it, really? <laughs> Housing enforcement officers Micaia Angus and Andrew Sedman are on their way to one of the borough's most prominent landmarks, the Mason's Arms. But it's not the pub they're interested in. It's the rooms above it. It's been a problem property for approaching a decade. Overcrowded slum conditions. There's between three and seven individuals in each room. There are 14 rooms. To sum it up, I'd just say it's a weeping sore of Harrow. Horrible. The property has already been raided several times by the council, but they're worried it's still dangerously overcrowded. As I walked in, I was like, oh my God, this is ridiculous. Fecal matter. Oh, I wouldn't stand in that. I'm seeing raw sewage flowing onto the public highway and people having to like step over it or step in it. It's disgusting. This morning, the housing officers are joining the police, fire brigade and planning department for a full inspection. Good morning, Harrow Council. Hello, we need to inspect all the rooms. The property has permission to house up to nine people. It's soon clear that there are far more living here. Come on, this is desperate. There's mould all over the place. Look, it's a cockroach. It stank, it was disgusting. Grubby, horrible, things falling apart. Just everywhere you look, there was a hazard. Squeezed into each of the 14 rooms are two to three beds and at least the same number of fridges. Got two fridges. Three? Three. Oh, yeah. The risk of a fire breaking out is a serious concern. We've got rubbish electrics. I mean, that's good smoke detection, isn't it? The communal kitchen is just as worrying. That's cockroach shells, right? Cockroach cases. Yeah. Andrew decides to check in with the housekeeper. Excuse me. How many people live here, please? Where in the house? In the whole property. Upstairs. Now it's fourteen. Fourteen. Yes. But Andrew's not convinced by her arithmetic. There was a lot more. We must have had at least three people in each room. We've got 14 rooms there. So there was well over 30 people living there. I want to see what's in this room. Can you open this door, please? My thanks, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Young man, I'm going to need you to come out for a minute, please. This isn't a room, this is a cupboard. 
Yeah, it's exactly what it is. You've got the housekeeper's son living in here. There has been a leak here. It's, it hasn't been repaired properly. You can still see water stains coming through. And it was literally just space for a bed. And the window that's in there, it's got bars on it. So if that boy was stuck in that room, he would lose his life. That's not how people are supposed to be living in this day and age. She tells me her son is visiting her. Mm. He's visited here last time I was here and the time before that. Really? Yeah. yeah. As well as the housekeeper and her son, the only other person present is Nikolai, the man who collects the rent on behalf of the landlord. I wish to talk to him. There's three or four of them in a room. They're paying £300 each a month. You know, most people here is slavers. They catch like £60 a day. I can understand they're looking for cheap accommodation, but we also have to ensure that that property, that home, that place is safe for them to reside in. There's plenty of money being made here, ridiculous amounts of money. They're definitely not spending that money on repairs here. There's a lot of questions here that need answering. I think the answers are very obvious. They don't care. When you collect the rent, do you issue receipts to the individuals? Before, I took about two mm. years ago, mm. yeah, I collect like every room mm -hmm. and uh, give you a receipt also. Exactly. But OK, if... you've got records of those receipts. I don't know because this is long you're time. Suppo you're supposed to, if it's only two years ago, you're supposed to keep your receipts for at least f six to seven years. Have you been declaring the income from this property? Listen, from now I not collect the rent. You know what, you're going to have to explain to our associates in the tax office as to what you've been doing. I hope so. You know, but the thing, is, the thing is, you're not going to be able to fob them okay. off. Right, I've had enough of this. Let's get out of here. Yep. <sighs> Micaiah and Andrew have seen enough to know that they need to close the place down. It was fair to say no one could live there anymore. Too many hazards, too dangerous. So knowing what we'd seen, immediate action, shut it down. Eviction specialist Paul Champlina from Landlord Action is on his way to Dagenham in Essex. It is now 7 o'clock in the morning, bright and early, and I've got to go and serve a Section 8 notice. And when we have to serve notices, we normally do them early with tenants so that we can catch them in, try and have some dialogue with them with regard to why they're not paying the rent. The tenant, Brigitte Chepkanskien, currently owes her landlord £4,500 in rent. As soon as the Section 8 notice is served, she will have just two weeks to pay up or move out. You know, most landlords out there, they're people looking to try and invest for their future. And of course, when you're not getting any payment from a tenant in five months, then uh, it gets emotional, especially when uh, you've got mortgages to pay and legal fees to, to, to cover. Paul's particularly worried because the landlord, 76-year-old Zara Hussein, depends on the rent to cover her living costs. I could do without this headache. This is a big worry for me. Yeah. There is bills to pay. Yeah, hi, Paul. Hi, Zara. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. So uh, I've looked at how much rent arrears are owing. Yes. Said there's 4,500, so she owes five months' rent. Rent, absolutely. OK. Have you had any contact with her or through the agent? Well, what, the agent tried paying? to contact her and mm. she blocked his number. Oh, really? And then also when he went to the house, that's what he told me, mm -hmm. she wouldn't open the door. Right, so she's ignoring it. She's ignoring him, right. yeah. Right, that seems a bit dubious, doesn't yeah. it? Zara would, would, was stressed out and I could see that she was stressed out. She's not an, you know, an older lady. Uh, a grandma, and uh, she was very jittery and very nervous. So I was quite conscious of making sure that she could see some action was taken. Should we go and see Yeah, him? surely, come on, yeah. Let's go and see yeah. if we can get him out of bed. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> this is it, yeah? You've always got to be a bit fearful as to what you're dealing with, because you never know. And then we saw the door. It's 
clearly has some problems there. It had been kicked in. I was angry and shocked it was damaged. And uh, that was worrying me. I don't know what happening inside. No one's answering. So what I'm going to try and do is, if I can serve it, might... Right, that's been served. We've now done the first step. We've yeah. served the notice. We've taken uh, recorded evidence that that's yeah. been done. Yeah. We now have to wait two weeks. Yes. If the tenant doesn't pay the rent or leave the property, Zara will have to take her to court, which could mean it's months before she's evicted. I don't want to put landlords off, <laughs> but uh, it is a tough game. You know, it's very tough. It's six days since Housing Enforcement Officer Makaya Angus inspected the rooms above the Mason's Arms. I'm disgusted. This is 2018 and we still have people living in squalor. Come then, let's get moving. Makaya and her colleague Andrew Sedman have obtained the legal right to close the property down. Hello, Every room is given the paperwork explaining that no one's allowed to live here until further notice. And that includes the rent collector himself, Nikolai. You've got a find alternative accommodation. I will give you some time, but you need to get out of here. It's unsafe. When we shut a property down and people are told to leave, reality is they are homeless. We have to think very, very hard about any decision we make which puts people out of the building. In this case, I wouldn't be able to sleep knowing that there's people in that property because they could die. It is a big decision to make, but we had to do something because those in receipt of the rent were taking liberties with other people's lives. They're taking risks, and that's not fair. Okay, because, uh, let me read this proper and I'm going to explain to people. Mm -hmm. Actually, they have to leave, yeah? Yeah, yeah. everybody. Just everyone. <laughs> Everything about this place yeah. is wrong. Okay. The electrics are unsafe. Most of the amenities do not work. It's only a matter of time before someone gets hurt or, or dies. That, that's how bad we see it. So I don't do it. We don't have to, not to anyone. Nikolai appears to be cooperating, but Mikhaya suspects his boss, the landlord of the property, might ignore the order. We'll have to come back in a few weeks, unannounced, um, and see what's going on. Thank you, sir. It's four months since eviction specialist Paul Champlina served a Section 8 notice on Zara Hussein's tenant. Unfortunately, the tenant, Brigitte Chepkanskian, didn't leave, and 76-year-old Zara had little choice but to take her to court. Zara won the case, and today her nine-month ordeal should finally be over. We've been dagging them really early. We're doing the eviction for Zara's property. And when you don't know who's behind the door, I'm quite anxious, because I think there's a chance it may kick off. Hi, Paul. Hi. How are you? You okay? I'm, I'm feeling a bit, well, nervous. It's really nervous, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We don't know what's, what, who's what's there. In, yeah, what's inside. Oh. There, there could be trouble. Trouble, absolutely. There could be trouble. Nine months without rent is a lot of money, so Zara was really nervous when I saw her. She didn't know what to expect, and bearing in mind that it, there could be an altercation, you know, you don't want an older lady to have to go through that and deal with that. Joining Paul and Zara is the High Court Sheriff, Scott Hines. Mate, we can start now if you want. Yeah, let's give him a knock, eh? Hey? All right, single keys. Zara's tenant and whoever else is in the property have just 30 minutes to leave. This one here, yeah? Yeah. yeah. The 
I've obviously had a lot of trouble waiting here. People trying to smash the door. As there's no answer and the tenant has changed the locks, all they can do is wait for the locksmith to turn up. Yes. In the meantime, Zara calls the building manager to find out if he knows how many people could be inside. Five, five six people. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Mm -hmm. Should we come please? No, well, let's see. I need to place mine where you don't okay. want. Okay. Yeah. Hello. Hello, mate. All right. Ten minutes later, the locksmiths arrive. Get me in, please. While they work on the door, there's no sound from inside the flat. Of course, tensions are rising. Could you believe someone's in there and they're trying to ignore you? Sometimes, when you do get into the property, the tenants are vacated, so you just don't know what's happening and what's going on. But Scott's convinced someone is in. Good morning. Good morning. Do you want to open the door for us, please? I'm an enforcement agent. I've got a high court writ here. You've been evicted this morning. Good morning, sir. Yeah, if you open the door, I'll show you my paperwork. But I ain't going to do it through a closed door, am I? Do you want to open the door for me, please? Pardon? Oh, I've been banging and banging. Right, but she won't answer. You start doing that, and then she knows it's happening. She's now screaming. Pardon? Well, I'll open it what? then, please. It takes two seconds, doesn't it? Put a bolt on. Take the lock off. Half an hour has already been wasted, and Scott's patience has run out. Just get it open, mate. If you've got a car, yeah, just, just, just smash it open. Oh my god, it's such a nightmare. I don't know. Just kick it, kick it, kick it. There we go. There you go. There. Good morning. There's a high court real procession. Yeah. That tells me you have to leave this morning. You can pack the bag and leave for me, please. So, who else is here? Just you? No, it's just Valent. Okay, he needs to wake up. Yeah, yeah. He needs to take the bag. Okay, then you need to leave. It's as simple as that. You're always quite relieved when you eventually open the door and there's only a couple of people and there's not four, five, six blokes. Because, you know, sometimes obviously it can be quite fractious. Is there any needles in here? Any sharps anywhere? No. no? Okay. Right, can we start getting dressed for me, please? Can I get more people? Once you're leaving, I'll give you the paperwork. For 15 minutes. Why 15 minutes? Why? Give me an hour. Hold on, you, yeah, had, no, you haven't paid the rent for nine months. Okay, start packing your stuff, you're going now. Yeah, I will. Thank you. You're not going to get any money back. Nothing, yet. no. we just got to get the property back. You've got to do what you can and try and re let and get yeah. decent tenants in. Yeah. Well, I think we're ready to go, aren't we, Trace? Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. This is Madam, I just need you to give me a signature. So, how you got your property you can back? Stick that on the dock. What else, Scott? Right, that's no problem. Right, good luck. The tenant has seven days to collect the rest of her belongings. I was expecting to take everything and just go away. Look at the state. I, so much of stuff. Well, nine months she lived here, isn't it? Rent free. <laughs> I hope you don't have any more aggravation. No. Nah. If there is any problems, give us a call. Okay, okay. then, Paul. Thank, thank you. Very you. Much. Take thank care. You. Good luck. Good luck Thanks. in the future. Bye bye. Thanks. Zara spent nine months trying to get her tenant out and has lost over £7,000 in unpaid rent and legal fees. She's unlikely to see the money again, but she can now start renting the property out and hopefully recoup some of her lost earnings. I put it down to bad experience and I want to move forward. It's not an experience I won't forget in a hurry. <laughs> Lawyer Chris Sharp from the Landlord Group is on his way to deal with a problem at an empty rental property in South East London. The people in there claim to have answered an ad 
in a local shop window. They say that they met up with a man at a train station. He then took them to the property. They liked the property, proceeded to pay him £3,600 in cash. They entered the tenancy and that is it. However, the man they allegedly met wasn't the real landlord. Mother of four, Sarah Ling, has owned the property for 11 years. On the face of it, they thought they had a tenancy, and on the face of it, they'd paid money to somebody to live there. So it looked like they'd been a victim as much as we were. Sarah was about to refurbish the three-bed property, but until the occupants, a young couple with a baby, leave, there's nothing she can do. She was caught between a rock and a hard place because she felt sorry for them. And actually, she believed what they were saying. Why wouldn't she? But Chris isn't convinced. There can only be two scenarios to this situation. One is that the people in there are genuinely innocent victims. Or two, they are part of the scam. Whether the couple's innocent or not, they're refusing to leave. And three months on, Sarah's only option is to take them to court. This morning, Chris is serving them with notice of the hearing. First things first. Get a dog, then. <clears throat> the notice informs the occupants that the case will be heard in 12 days' time. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, sir. You've spoken to my client, Sarah, that she owns the property and that nobody's got any right to be in here. I don't know. Well, you do know that you had a word with Sarah, don't you? Yeah. You do know that you had a word with Sarah, don't you? And you spoke to her. I know if you are. Who's your landlord? Who's the landlord? Uh. I think they need the dog back in. The dog's friendly anyway. Knock at the door and walk away because I think that dog needs to go back inside. Let's go. days later, it's the day of the hearing, and Sarah's on her way to meet Chris at Woolwich County Court. I just want it to sort itself out as quickly as possible, really. You know, it's been about nearly enough three months now. Even though she's hoping that the couple will be evicted, Sarah's emotionally torn. They've got a young baby. You're basically putting them out on the street. It's not a nice position to have to be in, really. But Chris is worried that the couple could, despite Sarah's sympathy, cause them a lot of trouble. What could go wrong today? By wrong, we wouldn't get the order for possession. Is that if they turn up with the landlord who they purportedly say gave them the contract. But because that, in my opinion, is all made up, that's never going to happen. But ultimately, courts have a discretion will the court have a bit of sympathy for the victims? Who knows? If the couple put up a strong defence, the case could easily be adjourned, putting Sarah back to square one. Hi, Sarah. Hello. So it's a Hiya. journey down Hiya. here? Not too bad. We'll go in, we'll get settled down, and then we'll go before the judge. Whether they'll turn up today is anyone's guess. But look, let's go inside okay. and uh, let's get this hopefully over with. Hopefully, yeah, fingers okay. crossed. I was a bit concerned that they were going to show up and I didn't know whether they were going to make up something or, you know, how that was going to work out. So, yeah, I was a bit apprehensive about how it would go. Half an hour later, the hearing's over and the couple are seen leaving the court. Well, I think by the look of Sarah's face, <laughs> you can see how it went. We got the order. They turned up. They got legal advice. They conceded the point that they had no right to be there. But Sarah, out of the very good nature that Sarah is, she's allowed them 14 days to pack the gear up and go. 
Now I think that's a very nice gesture by Sarah because they've got they've got a child, haven't they? I don't mind giving them 14 days if that gives them time to sort of sort themselves out. If that's what it takes just to finish it amicably, then that's fine. Two weeks is nothing really. We've been, they've been there for months. What's another two weeks really? <laughs> If the couple don't leave, Sarah will have to pay bailiffs to physically evict them. Just hope that they, you know, do what they say they're going to do and, you know, go at the end of the foot two weeks, really. Who's got a warrant? It's 6 a.m and Housing Enforcement Officers Makaya Angus and Andrew Sedman have returned with the police to the Mason's Arms in Harrow. Ready? Police! Police! They suspect the rooms above the pub are still occupied. Prior to getting a warrant, we had actually passed by, seen the property, seen a TV on in the property, seen lights on, knocked on the door, lights had gone out. So I thought, yeah, we'll find someone in there. Good morning, is anyone here? Scared. A month ago, Micaiah and Andrew demanded that the place be closed down. All 14 bedrooms appear to be empty, but when they go into the kitchen, it's clear someone is living here. But the officers aren't sure who it is. There's evidence that someone or somebody's have has been staying here. Yeah, I mean, so you wouldn't leave an iPad. You wouldn't leave a system like this, a microphone. Food and some yeah. pieces. Yeah. Around. I'm convinced that people are still living here. Please. In a locked room nearby, the officers make a chilling discovery. Oh, God. Holy out, out. Wow. Those need to come off the street. <laughs> Those can't hit the street. They will do some serious damage. They're such big knives. What are you going to use those for? That's not for chopping vegetables, is it, really? They were horrible things. Those things are designed to kill people and to have so many of them. What, what on earth is going on? What are they doing there? There was a rifle in one of the rooms. It turned out to be an air rifle, but things like that do make you wonder what else there is going on in there. While the police take the weapons away to be destroyed, the housing officers continue to look around. You're not going to leave your washing like that and vacate. Despite the obvious signs of habitation, Makaya needs to know exactly who's living here. <sighs> we've, got, we've got to find somebody in here to prove our case at the end of the day. Yes, there is evidence, but we don't have enough evidence. We, it has to be tight <laughs> to ensure we can carry it further. I was slightly upset that there were no bodies in there but it was clear to see people were still living and sleeping there loads of stuff in here look Ooh. the prosecution process may take time but until then the lucrative rental business is closed until further notice we're not beating about the bush anymore this is now the end of a line We've shut the property down, end off. Seventy-two-year-old grandfather and retired academic Rob McPhail is on his way to his two-bed rental flat in affluent St John's Wood. His tenant, Mahir Vachani, hasn't paid any rent for four months and it's taking a financial toll on Rob. I'm relying on that property as my pension. Simple as that. So what it means is every payment that the tenant misses, I don't have my pension. But only a year ago, 
Mahir appeared the perfect tenant. According to my letting agent, this chap was a young man starting out in life. Um, he'd been living with his parents and they were impressed with what a nice young man he was. He was prepared to pay six months rent in advance. What more could one want? More fool me. Rob now believes that despite paying £10,000 rent up front, Mahir never moved into the property. Instead, he had other plans. It transpires that he's letting it out on the Airbnb for something like £125 a night. Looking on the site, I found that 48 people had actually stayed there, paid the money and reviewed the site, the property as being a lovely property. I was incandescent. To Rob's horror, the Airbnb advert showed that his two-bedroom flat was now a six-bed holiday let, being rented out under assumed names. By the time I went onto the Airbnb site and found out that he'd used two aliases to actually let the flat out, my blood pressure by this time was sort of at boiling point. Concerned his flat would be damaged by complete strangers, Rob promptly asked his tenant to stop subletting. But his tenant Mahir's response made matters even worse. He then stops paying his rent. <laughs> he now owes me five and a half thousand pounds. Rob threatened legal action, and three weeks ago, Mahir agreed to give up the property. Today, Rob's going there to find out if he's been as good as his word. The day I went to the flat, I tried the key. The key didn't work. He's changed the locks. And I suddenly realised I've been my mug again. Guess what? Um, I can't get into my flat. But the landlord doesn't have to wait long, as just then, his tenant Mahir and a friend turn up. Hi come in, come in. Come in and have... Uh, I can't, why have you changed the locks? Because the locks weren't working. We've bought another set for you. And can I have a set, please? Yeah. Now they're face to face, Rob takes the opportunity to confront his unscrupulous tenant. Look, why are you renting out? Really why do you owe me five and a half thousand pounds? I'm happy to pay any money that we Step do. It. I think he realised he'd been well and truly caught. I think he wanted to avoid the repercussions of being caught because, of course, if it goes on to county court judgments, he will never be able to rent another property. He will never be able to get a bank loan. You don't need to answer anything. Now. Okay, then I'm going to go to your speech and I'm sorry. Yeah. If you had met with us in a court, no. your man, we'd be really no. happy to have no. spoken with you. Bye-bye. No. No. Okay. That's fine. No, come on, let's go. Yeah. Bye-bye. I'm really sorry. I would have been happy no. to have spoken bye -bye. with you nicely. Bye-bye. No. There we go. He says he prepared to pay his rent, but why hasn't he? What is actually going on in the flat? As Rob has already given Mahir notice of an inspection, he can legally go in the flat. Ah, 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 ah. Now, what did I say to you? Look, look, two single beds, nothing to do with me whatsoever. Let's look in the other bedroom. Yep, more cases. Those are certainly not my cases. Somebody's pyjamas. It says to me, considering all the cases that are in there, that he's still subletting. It's now clear that Mahir is ignoring Rob's requests and he will have to take his tenant to court. My first reaction was to take him out and hang him from the roof by his ankles, my anger was replaced by depressed resignation. What this now means is I'm going to have to, have to pay for court costs, I'm going to have to get the bailiffs in, then going to have to try and extract the five and a half thousand pounds from him. Ugh.
It's now two months since lawyer Chris Sharp took the couple living in Sarah Ling's house to court. As Chris suspected, they didn't move out as agreed. We're on our way to uh, Sarah's house in Woolwich. It's bailiff day. The bailiffs are coming in about half an hour. Sarah is not a Rockefeller landlord. She hasn't got loads of money, but what she has is a heart. But unfortunately, I think these guys, they were playing us all for what they could. Even though the couple will be evicted this morning, Chris is concerned it won't be the end of Sarah's ordeal. The one thing that is out of our hands is how they have left the property, the condition. If the outside is anything to go by, and I don't think we can hope for much on the inside. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Chris. How are you? I'm good, thanks. This seems to be worse than last time. Yeah. Morning, guys. Hi. Chris, we're all At 8 a.m., the Morning. bailiffs arrive How's and the Sarah eviction begins. Right? We're going to have a look. It's soon clear that the couple and their baby have left before the bailiffs could throw them out. There you go. See you then, Chris. All the best. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Good luck. Thank you. With the bailiffs gone, Chris, Sarah, and her builder, Perry, try and work out exactly what the couple were up to. There's plenty of mattresses in here. There's there are. certainly more mattresses than there would suggest people, because yeah. we've only seen two, yeah, two people. Baby. There's mattresses everywhere. Again. A couple of mattresses in here. Yeah, there's a whole lot more people living here than uh, they were letting on. As the couple had a baby, Sarah went out of her way to help them. Discovering that they were taking advantage of her is a huge disappointment. We discovered subsequently from neighbours that it wasn't just this family that were living in the house. There were an awful lot of people coming and going. I've actually taken the whole lot of things off the ceiling. Oh, it's oh, I'm not going to go in there. No, no it's, not, it's not worth it. It absolutely reeks. It's as if they've just been peeing on the floor for weeks. It absolutely stinks. What gets me is that I had a baby. I do, as I say, that's what I can't get my head around. If you had a little baby, how you would go into a bathroom like that and bath your baby. I don't understand how you would do that. Wherever you're living, there's no excuse to like not keep it clean, is there, to have all this rubbish? Oh, no. Nothing homely about this whatsoever. You've got your property back. It's not in the greatest of condition. And if you've got any problems, Sarah, just give us a bell. Yeah, we'll do. See you later, guys. Thank you. It's been an eye-opening experience for Sarah, but she's determined to move on. Five months later than planned, she can finally start renovating the rental property. It's nice to get it back and just, you know, let, get it sorted. It is going to cost quite a lot of money, yeah, but it could be a nice house. I just hope it can get back to there. Landlord Rob McPhail has returned to his two bed rental flat in St John's Wood. Interesting. That used to be affixed to the door. How nice. Six weeks ago, Rob took his tenant Mahir Vachani to court and won possession of the property. Mahir owes him £9,000 in unpaid rent and was subletting rooms out on Airbnb. We're missing a sofa bed and we're missing an armchair. We're also missing a rug. 
It was very, very depressing. Over the past six months, Rob's not only endured a long legal battle with his tenant, but also his own serious health issues. Entirely out of the blue, was struck by septic arthritis of the knee. One's extremely unwell. So I then spent the next six weeks as an inpatient in hospital. Certainly the five months between finding out and actually managing to get possession of the flat were very stressful, both financially and in every other way. Having had major health problems, all of which started when things came to a head, yes, of course it's had an effect. Rob may have his flat back, but he's lost a lot of money, money he can ill afford. The money judgment is for a shade over £9,000, but if you add the missing stuff, £2,000 worth of furniture, the legal costs, another £2,000 onto that, so that I should think we're talking about thirteen grand. Rob is determined to chase Mahir for the money. In the meantime, he's keen to sort the flat out and get it rented out again. The sooner I can get things let and money back in, decent tenants, oh, so much the better. I've spent most of my adult life basically believing in the decency and goodness of other people. To have that so obviously shown not to be the case and um, to be made to feel a complete sap, right, is very hard. on the driveway. Next time, a London landlord is held hostage in his own home. It's a criminal offence if you break this door. An enforcement officer stumbles across a property dangerously packed with people. Who is your landlord? Who do you pay your rent to? Man, not, move, man! And a live-in landlord is forced out by his furious lodgers. It's a landlord that's been harassing us. Shut up, 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 sh